It's officially March of 2021. Hard to believe it's been almost a year since we have been in quarantine, that we have been dealing with COVID-19. I am really thankful that a year ago, we did not know that we would still be at this place a year later. Anyway, in March, we roll into physical health. Physical health is our 12 element of health in March. And I'm going to be discussing throughout this month, our human body. It's amazing. Our human body is so complicated and so detailed. The more and more I learn about it, the more and more I know I don't know. As I've gotten into more cranial work within my chiropractic career, I remember studying a lot about the brain and the, the venous system in there and the cranial nerves. And I remember thinking at one point, man, I really, I think I have this figured out. And then I flipped the page and whatever I was, whatever I was learning about had 14 other subcategories and subchapters and the details of how our human body works truly is unbelievable. I remember back in chiropractic school, we took embryology and that is the formation of the human body from you know, egg and sperm coming together and how that turns into a baby. And I'll say, I remember going through that class and it was the first time I knew for a hundred, like a hundred percent faith that there was a God or a creator or a higher power. I thought there's no possible way that this wasn't orchestrated some way. But this isn't about that. This is about how does our body work just in general. So the best way, the best analogy that I've found to use um, when I'm talking with patients to explain the brain and the nervous system and all the organs in a simplified way is to kind of think about it like electricity. When you think about electricity, it has to come from somewhere, right? It normally starts in a big power plant. And then it goes to a transformer and then it goes to a tower and then it probably goes to another transformer. I don't know all the details, I'm not an electrician, but eventually it comes into kind of a, a big box that might be outside of your house that then feeds into the breaker boxes of houses. And from the breaker box that you probably have down in your basement, you have different pathways that then go to your lights, to your refrigerator, to anything that you plug in. And when something's not working well, you have to determine what is the source of the problem. So let's say your light doesn't, doesn't turn on. Sometimes it's because the light bulb's burnt out. So if you check that light bulb or you plug it into another um, outlet and it works fine, then it's not the light bulb. So then you think it might be the outlet. Maybe, maybe I blew a fuse and the outlet isn't working. And so you kind of have to start from the beginning and then work your way deeper and deeper and deeper. Now, if your whole house electricity go out, goes out, maybe it's the breaker box in your community. Maybe it's a transformer. Maybe it's a tower. Maybe for some reason it's starting at the actual power plant. And that is really the basis for how our body works. When our bodies are being form, formed in utero, the brain and the spinal cord is one of the very first things to actually actually cr be created. A lot of times when, you, when people ask, oh, wh what do you think the first thing in your body is created? A lot of people would say the heart. They think of that as kind of the, the be all end all of that's what controls our body or um, that is at the heart of our body, so to speak. But actually the heart is just one organ off of this entire system that starts in the brain and goes down the spinal cord. So for every single function that our body has, whether that's our heart rate, our heart beating, breathing, our eyes blinking, smell, digestion, movement, our hormones being created, our sensations, anything, every single function that our body does has to start in the brain and then whatever's controlling that part, whether it's a cranial nerve, it's a spinal nerve, it works down, it works down. I'm sorry, for the cranial nerves, it goes directly from the brain, the cranial nerves, and then to those functions. If it's going down the spinal nerves, it goes down the spinal cord from the brain, and then it branches out. And when someone has a physical issue with their body or a symptom, there are a number of different ways to look at it. And depending on which doctor you go to, you will find that different doctors take things in a little differently and they have different toolboxes. I always say each doctor has one set of, you know, teachings, one set of experiences, one toolbox that might have a couple tools in it. 
So if you go and see your MD and you have a headache, the MD is probably going to take, you know, your history, going to go through, maybe do a little exam. And most likely, because many MDs, unless you're seeing a naturopath or even a DO or someone that is a functional medicine doctor, their first line of defense, their first toolbox might be some medication to see, you know, can we alleviate that symptom through that medication? As a chiropractor, I look at it and say, okay, the headache is one of the symptoms of what's going on in the body. And because our bodies are set up to heal themselves and really maintain a homeostasis or a balance all by itself, it's kind of a self-inclusive system that understands how to take care of itself in an, an amazing way. So I look at it and say, okay, well, what could be causing extra pressure in the brain that would be causing pain? Could there be a black backup of blood flow? Could there be muscle spasm? Could there be inflammation that's putting pressure on the nerves? There's a variety of other things, just like that electrical system. If we go a little further down, a little further into the human body, what's actually the cause of that issue? And is there something I can do as a chiropractor to resolve it? Or do I need to send someone out to double check that something more serious is going on? I've had patients that have come to me that have had this one woman in particular pops in my head. She had severe pain in the back of her knee for a year and a half. She, she extra described it as a knife in the back of her knee. She'd gone to all different types of doctors, orthopedics and, um, and MDs and physical therapists, and she'd had x-rays and MRIs and everything about the knee. She had the therapy on the knee and nothing could resolve it whatsoever. And she finally came to me. She wasn't a big fan of chiropractic. She felt a little uneasy with it, but a couple of patients or a couple of friends of hers had mentioned to her that they had gotten help and maybe was worth a try because she was miserable and in so much pain. So she came to see me and I evaluated her. And while she had zero back pain, her, her right SI joint was so out of alignment and so fixated and her sacrum was tilted and there was a lot of muscle spasm in the glute area on the right-hand side. So some of the nerves come out of the low, lower lumbar area. Um, the sciatic nerve in particular goes down through the butt, down the back of the leg and down into the bottom of the leg. And so I talked to her, I said, you know what, maybe the, the where you have the symptom isn't exactly the root cause of the problem. And so I had to track it back up. And I literally did three really light Thompson table drop adjustments on her. And after that, she could physically bend over without pain for the first time in a year and a half. So again, it's, it's looking at the body and seeing this isn't supposed to be all about chiropractic. It's just how the body functions and what do we do when something's going wrong with it? And there are so many different ways to take care of our body and to make sure that we are maintaining optimal health. A number of those things we're gonna break out in other months of the 12 elements of health, like nutrition and hydration, movement and flexibility, emotional health, financial health, all these things go into the overall health of, of our human frame and our human body, ergonomics. We just, we just got done talking about ergonomics. You know, if you're working at a desk station all day long and you're not sitting in or standing in the right with the right, right ergonomics, ergonomics, I can't talk, um, then you're going to have your body break down in certain ways. And so there's lots of additional things that we'll be talking about throughout the year as we roll out each month. But for today, again, we're just talking about how do our bodies function and how do we best take care of it. I know one of the things I wanted to talk about is not defining yourself by a diagnosis. This can be a challenging thing. I see some patients that they get a diagnosis that's given to them by their MD, nothing against MDs. We all just kind of function a little different. And there's some MDs I love, absolutely love working with. But for some people, if they get a certain diagnosis, I feel as if they kind of lean into that diagnosis and kind of take it on as part of their personality. And this can affect our physical body. I truly believe that our mindset, our belief system, and what we believe to be true about our bodies are things that will continue to kind of percolate, things that will continue to be our truths. So one of the examples I had 
again, I'm going to put it back into a chiropractic standpoint. Um, we see many, many, many patients with, let's talk about low back issues. And at some point, if they're not responding the way we expect them to or hope them to, we'll send them out for an x-ray. Sometimes we send them out for an MRI. Some of these patients, it'll come back that there is some form of a disc herniation or disc bulge. And so on the MRI, we can actually physically see that there is a physical problem with the structure. And one of the things that I caution patients about is that just because it's there does not necessarily mean that that is 100% responsible for your pain. And this is the reason why. If that patient has good days, good weeks, good months, and then they throw their back out and they're miserable and they can't stand up for two days, that disc herniation has been there, unless you've had a severe injury or something recently, but that disc herniation has been there, that disc degeneration or that arthritis has been there, and that's not something that's going to change. What can change is inflammation, muscle spasm, spine, pelvis being out of alignment. Those things can change. And so when you have someone that has a symptom that isn't constant, that does get alleviated with, with conservative care or icing or time, then that disc herniation is not the primary cause. And so I, I always challenge my patients not to internalize, oh, I've got that disc herniation, right? It doesn't mean that it's not serious. It doesn't mean that it might not need to be addressed either now or later in, in a more, a, a more uh, intense way than conservative care, physical therapy, acupuncture, chiropractic, massage therapy, ice treatments, things like that. Those are all conservative care, um, non-invasive forms of therapies and treatment. But if you have good days, that means that that disc herniation is not 100% responsible for the problem. I find a lot of patients get in this gray area where they might have a couple of things that are on MRIs that if they went to a surgeon, they would be told that they were a surgical candidate. Um, if you see a surgeon, you're more likely to have surgery. Um, sometimes it's your only option. There was actually um, a doctor that came to the Chamber of Commerce and gave a talk who's a surgeon out of Edward Hospital. And I loved what he had to say. He was talking about everything someone should do prior to seeing a surgeon. And I love that he had chiropractic up on the list. And I went up to him afterwards and said, you know what? I just wanted to say hi. I've actually referred patients to you. It's great to meet you, my local chiropractor. And he looked at me and he said, you know what? My referrals from chiropractors are hands down my best referrals. He said, the reason is they've tried many conservative care methods. They've usually tried chiropractic. Most chiropractors have some physical therapy, might have massage therapy. And if a patient has gone through that protocol and they still you know, can't get numbness out of their leg or they have foot drop or they um, you know, are in debilitating pain, and they've gone through all of your protocol, then chances are they <coughs> are more likely to need surgery. And he actually said that of patients that come to him, only 5% of those patients need surgery. So I just find it really interesting that there's all these different ways to kind of look at our body, diagnose our body, and then there's, there's many different ways of taking care of our body and many different routes to go to find the help that you might need. Um, obviously, like I said, we're gonna talk about all of the prevention and everything in the upcoming months. Um, but I'm a big fan of being your own patient advocate. You know your body better than almost anyone, right? You know, you know your body and when something's wrong. And anytime you go to any doctor, including a chiropractor, doesn't mean we have all the answers just because we're a doctor. I, I feel as if some tides are turning because my older patients like, well, my doctor told me. And so they kind of take that as that's the only way to go or the only possible answer. And many times I found that any doctor sometimes makes mistakes. Any doctor sometimes overlooks something. Any doctor sometimes isn't open-minded to another treatment or therapy. Um, and that again, can be any type of doctor. So 
being your own patient advocate, I think is really important. When you go to a doctor and you get an answer and you don't feel like it's right or it's not helping you, getting a second, a third opinion, asking friends, families, a mom's group. Um, we have lots of people that ask for suggestions on the branch for nursing issues or colic or, you know, I'm having this problem myself. And while people commenting on the internet or on a mom's group should never be in replace of your doctor, it is interesting that if you only go to your one doctor, you're only going to have his or her suggestions. And that, like I said before, comes from a specific set of training, a specific set of experiences, and a specific toolbox that may only have a couple toolboxes in it. And if you have a doctor that your particular problem doesn't exactly fit in their wheelhouse, and at the end of the day, that doctor is not open-minded to any other treatment or thinks that trying some alternative care or, or things like that is, is nonsense or going to hurt you, then sometimes you never get to the root cause of the problem. And I see this happening in my practice over and over and over. So just remember that one doctor's opinion isn't always the be all end all. That you taking your, your health and being in charge of your health, you have more power than you think. You have power to keep your body healthy, stay on track, and keep doing the habits and the routines that help a healthy body. And keeping your mind in that positive mindset, we talked about mindset in January, and keeping your mind that I, my body is capable, my body is, is healthy, my body is on the right track, my body is healing. I'm not saying that your mind can magically make every awful thing go away that ails the human body, but it's certainly not going to hurt. And so when people come in and I can see them be defeated or deflated or so stuck on the fact that they have X, Y, or Z wrong with them, I really try to encourage them to peel back the layers of that and understand how much, how much responsibility and power we have for ourselves to make our own health choices, to keep this incredible human body working as well as it possibly can. So keep reaching out to different people if you're not getting the correct answers. Keep searching, be your own patient advocate, and you will find your answers somewhere along the way. I hope you have a great day. Thanks.